Hello, and welcome to question 16 on DS4400's practice exam. Given a neural network with the architecture shown below, assume there is only one single sample x with these initial weights, and we have ReLU as our activation function. What is the weight of the second layer after one single iteration of gradient descent using the step size of n equals, or not n, but step size of 0 0.1? So, when we see these problems, I want us to not panic. There's a lot of things going on here, but if we just approach it calmly and we think about all of our experience with neural networks and how they work, the path forward becomes very clear. So the first step we're going to do is collect all the data that we've been given in our heads and realize that there's two things missing here that we haven't been given. For any neural network, you might know that you need to specify your loss function. Well, we're not actually given one. So in the case that you're not given a loss function, both in this class and in the future, honestly, it's a pretty safe bet to assume MSE. The other thing we're not given is what Y initial is, or it's not Y, y initial, what our true value is, right? What's our prediction value? What's our label, right? So we can write that as YI. And unfortunately, in this case, you can't just assume a value of yi, so you just don't have one. You're going to have to work with it as a variable. But it doesn't mean the problem is impossible, it just means you're going to have to work around a variable. Now, another thing I'd like to highlight is that we're using ReLU as our activation function, which, if you don't remember, this is a piecewise where we return x and 0, x, we return x when x is greater than 0, and we return 0 when x is less than or equal to 0. Technically, you would return undefined at zero, but for the purposes of this class, we'll just return zero when x is zero. Okay, so let's get to the question. How do we find w2 after the second, at the second step? So we can write that as w2, 2. Well, if we remember how gradient descent works, we realize that this is just w2 at the first step minus our learning rate times the derivative of our weights with respect, or sorry, the derivative of our loss function with respect to our weights. And we can rewrite this as, we can break up the derivative into dl df times df dw2. And we can then elaborate on what this is. Because this whole thing is just this. That's the professor's notation. Okay, so what is this? Well, this chunk right here, let me use a highlighter. This chunk right here is the derivative of the mean squared error function, right? We do the power rule. The, there is originally a two here, and that sort of comes down, and that's where we get the two over n from. The h is from dfdw2, and you'll see where that comes from later. So. How are we going to get all of these values? Well, we're given this, we're given this, and we need to find this, and we need to find this. But we are given n as well. OK. And we are never given that, but we don't need it. So how would we find the values y hat i and h? Well, the way we do this is we'd make a forward pass of our algorithm. And this is very in line with how neural networks work. You know, whenever we run gradient descent and we, we want to train our model, we always have to run it first and then we calculate the errors that we made and we run gradient descent with that. 
So in neural networks, what we do is we do a forward pass where we run our model, and then we use backpropagation to propagate our errors backwards using gradient descent to update our weights. Does that make sense? Grad neural networks are just a, a series of linear regressions in, 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 in essence. Um, you can think of them, they're a little bit more complicated than just that, but that's the most simple view of them. I'm sure the professor has a different explanation of it that's a bit um, more mathy and probably more correct, but this is a, an easy and intuitive way to think about a neural network. So let's do a forward pass then. How are we going to do a forward pass? Well, we gotta pass our data, our x, into the model. Now, the way you compute the results of every single layer is you take the weights of that layer. So for the first layer, we're going to do w1. That's the wrong, it's w1. We're going to transpose those weights, and we dot them with our input data. So in this case, it's x. So let's do that. Negative 1, 0. That's not right. Negative 1, 2, 0. Negative 1. 0, 1, negative 1, 2. We dot that with x, so 0, 1, 2, 0. And if we calculate this out, we get, I think that's 2, and I think this is negative 1. So this right here, I would like to highlight, is our pre-activation value. This is our pre-activation value for our first layer. Now, how would we get to our post-activation value? Right? Well, what's our activation function? That's really what we need to know. Oh, it's ReLU. So all we do to get to our post-activation function is we apply our activation function to our pre-activation value. So we denote ReLU because it's special and we use it a lot with a plus sign, and we just apply ReLU to every single element. So two is greater than zero, so we return two. And negative 1 is less than 0, so we return 0. And this is our post-activation value, which we can also refer to as h in this case. Technically, h sub 1, and this is technically h sub 1. But I'm being a little bit loose with the notation here because our network is so small that I don't need to do a lot of subscripts. Um, I'll just do uh Yeah. I'll stop doing the notation. Okay, so now that we have this, we've passed our data through our first layer. Sorry for the moving screen, but there's a lot of components here. So we've gotten through our first layer, and now we need to move to our second layer. So our input to our second layer is 2, 0, because it's h. And our weights for our second layer, well, we're given them. So, 2, negative 1, 2, 0. It gives us 4. This is our pre-activation value, so we need to apply our activation function. And we get 4. This is our output value, because it could, this is going to our output layer. And the output layer just is the output. So, this is our output value, or you might recall this being y hat. Okay, we have all the pieces that we need. We have h and y hat, and as I outlined above in here, we need to solve for those, and we got them. So let's lay out our function. w1, sorry, w2 initially is 2, negative 1, minus 0 0.1 times, and then we have 2 over n. In this case, what is n? Well, it's one single iteration. Sorry, that's the wrong one. One single sample x. You only have one sample. So we're going to do 2 over 1, and the sum of every single sample, well, we only have one sample, so I'm going to get rid of the sum. And we'll just find our output, which is 4, minus y initial, or yi. We're not given yi, so we can't calculate that. And I think we multiply this by h. 
Okay, and all that's left for us to do now is we solve this. And I believe this is 2 times 2 times 0 0.1, so 0 0.4 times 4 minus y i 0, which is going to give us 2 minus 0 0.4 times 4, which is uh, 1.6. So that is going to be 0 0.4, and then we're minus a negative. So we'd add 0 0.4 y sub i. This is all over. We have a negative 1 on the bottom, minus 0, so it's just negative 1. This is our final state of w2, 2. All right, that was a bit of a long one, but hopefully not too complicated. Good luck on your final.